Jill for being here with us today and for preaching for us this morning as well. Let us continue our service with our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires live, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. How often have I longed to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, says the Lord. But you would not come to me. Let us, as wayward children, return to God and confess our sins. We pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our name in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your kingdom. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remain standing to sing together the hymn.
generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love. Grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are talking. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from an insult and spitting. The Lord God helped me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My epistle is taken from the book of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with the bridle. If we put bits into the mouth of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them. Yet they are guided by a very small rudder, 
wherever, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the Tawi is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a, as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth came, bless come, blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives? Or a great vine figs. No more can salt water yield fresh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let us stand together to sing our gradual hymn number 68 Be Still My Soul.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo, undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of Praise to thee, Christ. Jesus told 
Solomon decided not to tell anyone about him. Herod, the Romans, and the ruling elite would be eliminated without a second thought. Jesus' version of the fire was very different. He made no claim to overthrow the government or to defeat the Romans. Rather, he showed God's power in a completely new way by healing the sick and raising the dead, talking about the kingdom in roundabout ways through stories and parables that illustrated God's love and care, and how to live so that God's reign could be clearly seen. Hundreds of years earlier, the prophet Isaiah had risen of a suffering servant. A man who would be inside utterly and completely to God, with no reservation, who was obedient even unto death, and whom God would vindicate. We heard one of those prophecies in the reading from Isaiah this morning, and we find it echo in what Jesus said to his disciples. That is, the Son of Man, the one who would stand for people, must suffer, be rejected, and die. And after three days, rise from the dead. And Peter objected. That wasn't his idea of a victorious Messiah. Not one bit. He was angry with Jesus. Jesus was angry with Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You're concentrating on the wrong things, human things, not divine things. And then Mark tells us that Jesus called the crowd with his disciples. Perhaps quite a group of passers by had gathered around aware that something important was being discussed. Maybe some of them recognized Jesus. So he called them closer and began to teach them about what it would mean to follow him. And there was nothing gentle Jesus did not about what he said to them and about what he says to us, his followers today. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Carrying the cross meant you were on the way to death by crucifixion. Denying yourself, giving up the desire to choose one's own way, to live only in obedience to Jesus. Dedicate our freedom to his service is what he demands. Claiming to follow him and still follow one's own ambitions and desires won't work. It's all or nothing. Well, I thank God for his love, for his forgiveness, for his grace, for his constantly picking me up and putting me back on the path. Because trying for all or nothing is taking me a lifetime. And the older I get, the more I feel my failures. Not just me, of course. All of us struggle with the things that hold us back from giving our all. But because of the grace of God, we don't give up. We hang in there. Around the world, many people are taking up their cross in hostile situations. Men and women, children too, living their faith and knowing they may well be in danger. In China, where church members will be arrested and imprisoned and disappeared just like that. In India, where small Christian communities 
nationalist groups. In Iran, men and women are imprisoned because they're Christian. In many countries around the world, Christians standing up for the right of the poor and genetic have been targeted for working against the state. such a hostile situation. Thank God. We don't have that kind of threat. We don't worry that some other look up might come through the door at the middle of the service. But more and more people have no idea of the gospel, no idea of who Jesus is and what his kingdom stands for. Many churches, but by no means all, seem to be fighting a losing battle to survive. And that threat is very apparent to us all on this island. That we who claim to follow Christ and want to grow our churches have got to start listening to him a bit more closely. Individually, of course, but very importantly, to start learning to together as a church. In our services, in all our meetings and gatherings, to pray for guidance as how to spread the good news that Jesus, our King and our Lord, died and rose again so that the whole world might know God's love and mercy. We need to listen so that each of us knows how to follow more closely. The church family needs to listen together so that we can grow a community of people who love one another and the Lord and are eager for others to join us. Who do you say I am? Jesus asked his friends. When they answered this question and he showed them what following in tail, they were shocked. He asked this question of each of us. We believe that Jesus is not only the Messiah, but also the Son of God and Saviour of the world. And he still asked the question, who do you say that I am? Let us pray the words of St. Ignatius. Teach us, O Lord, to serve thee as thou deserves, to give and not to be the cost, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward except that of knowing that we do thy will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are challenged in our faith every day in the words of Christ. Let us stand to affirm the faith we have in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated to kneel for our intercessions. We come before you, Lord, in prayer, and hear that we pray our prayers to be heard by our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this day for the church in the world. We pray this day for the church in the world where it is persecuted, where violence is meted upon the church. And man's inhumanity to man forces people of faith into secrecy and hiding. Pray for the martyrs of the church who died for the death of faith they hold. On this day we remember all who died. Twin Towers disaster, commemorated yesterday. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our nation, for our Queen and all the royal family. We pray for our government that they continue worked so hard to lead us through this continuing pandemic and economic consequence. We pray for wisdom, for compassion. We care both for the people of this day, this nation, and for the people of the nations around the world so desperate for vaccines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, openly we pray for our island, for our island authorities, for our councils, the people who lead us day to day. We pray with thanks for this summer season, continuing at this time with this final prayer. We pray for all who have come to the island and still come to the island for their vacations and for so many other reasons. We pray for the care our services provide for us. We pray that as we take care, Incidents of affection among the island should continue to fall. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for those who are sick. We 
mind, body, or spirit. Pray for all those on our pillars, all those known to us, and all those for whom we have no knowledge but are known unto you. Pray for your healing hand upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. We pray today for those who have died. For those we know in our own personal histories, our families and friends. For those who have died during these difficult times. For those whose families grieve today, we hold in particular before you, Lord, our own beloved sister, Trish, and her family, as they come to terms with their early loss. We pray for Anne. For all others we hold before you in our hearts, who we love and see no more. Lord, who we yours, we have no more. Finally, Lord, we pray for our sons, we for you gather before you. As we hear the wisdom of Scripture, we hear the challenge of your call for us. Strengthen our hearts to do your work. Lord, we always hear our prayer. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us in the ways of today offer one another the sign of that peace. peace of the Lord be with you. As we walk one another peace, let us also stand to sing our poetry in number 310. I heard the voice of Jesus.
Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy, and because without you our human frailty cannot find keep us ever by your help from all things holy, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We stand for God's blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let us first sing our final hymn, number 511. No way. Thank you. 